I have finally caved to the masses and I now own a Benchmade Osborne 940. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. If you're new here, my name is Talon Sai, and I make new videos every single week. So if you like what you see, consider clicking subscribe. If you're not new here, then welcome back. You guys already know that I'm very into knives and this is one knife that I've sort of push off to the side for the longest time. I know it has a cult following, but there was just something about it that turned me away from it. We'll get into all of those details in a little bit, but of course we're going to be taking a look at the Osborne 940 today. The Osborne has been a staple in a lot of people's EDC loadouts for quite a while now and for a good reason. It has a comfortable ergonomic design, it's really slim in the pocket, and it can actually stand up to some pretty hard use. This version in particular happens to be a Blade HQ exclusive with a little bit of flair to it, and that's really what drew me to it. The Osborne in general has an overall length of 7.87 inches and a blade length of 3.4 inches. One of the more traditional models of the knife comes with a CPM S30V blade, however this exclusive comes with an M4 blade. It has a flat grind and it's sort of a modified reverse tanto point on there with a nice big swedge running across the spine of the blade. That thing is obviously coated in black and so is the rest of the hardware all the way through this knife all the way down to the traditional pocket clip. Now the really cool selling factor for me on this knife was the natural G10 handle scales. This is a thing that I've seen in a lot of exclusive knives throughout the years but I think it fits so well with the overall profile and design of this knife. What makes the natural G10 cool on this knife is that it's sort of translucent in the right light and because of that you can see how the Benchmade axis lock actually works. If you pull down on the side here you can actually see that omega spring in there flexing and it just adds a really cool mechanical almost futuristic sort of bio like creature vibe to it if that makes sense so what drew me away from this knife initially was basically just the standard Osborne that most people think of, which is a green aluminum handled version with an S30V blade, and then this same exact profile that you see here. There's nothing wrong with it, it's definitely a very comfortable and ergonomic knife, however I prefer pocket knives to be a little bit more linear and streamlined. With the way Warren Osborne designed this, it's sort of like an organic creature type of knife. So again, up here with the blade, this is a little bit long compared to what I'm used to carrying as an EDC knife, but it has a ton of functionality because of that longer blade. You have that sort of modified reverse tanto tip on there with a swedge running across the top, which makes slicing really nice. Again, full flat grind on here, and then on the opposite side, that's where you will find the Osborne logo and the M4 blade steel marking. Now, if you guys watch my videos religiously, you'll know that I'm not really a blade steel snob when it comes to things like this. However, the M4 is definitely a nice upgrade over the S30V if it's something that you're going to be using really hard. The corrosion resistance isn't quite there, but the edge retention and just how strong this steel is make it great for really hard use. That being said though, if you are everyday carrying a knife, some people would like to opt for the S30V version because it makes it easier to sharpen, the edge has better corrosion resistance with a steel like that, but no matter how you look at it, both steels are definitely adequate and I just really love the black finish on this blade as well. The ergos in my hand feel great. It's definitely a very slim knife, but you can choke up on it. You can have a thumb forward grip up here if you're getting into some fine detail work with wood. And then they have the typical jimping on the rear of the knife right here, as well as on the inside here, which is of course connected to those black liners. The pocket clip on here is pretty standard for Benchmade knives. It rides fairly well in the pocket and because it's so slim, it definitely doesn't take up too much real estate in there. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, like I always am, the only reason I became interested in this knife was because of these natural G10 handles. It's just super cool how it's translucent and you can see the inner mechanisms in there with the axis lock. It really makes this thing feel alien-esque, like an alien finger. Just the overall profile of the design, it's super slender. The natural G10, it almost looks like it would be some type of glow-in-the-dark material, which would be super cool if Benchmade has the, uh, ability to do that, I think that would be something that would be really cool in the future. But yeah, I've pushed this knife off for the longest time simply because I didn't like the aesthetics of it, but this one I like enough that it's been riding in my pocket now for the past two weeks and I've been using it day in and day out as my everyday carry knife. Now in these videos I do like to do a knife comparison, but because I'm on the road in my van, I have some knives, but it's not my full spread and my whole knife collection. so. We'll do a little bit of a comparison, mainly for size. That way I can give you guys a better idea of what this thing can be compared to. 
All right guys, so here we have the 940. Again, I don't have my whole knife collection here to do a good comparison. So a lot of these knives can be compared a little bit, but it's not gonna be a direct competitor to the Osborne. I'm working with what I got and this will just give you a better idea of the size of this thing. So when I initially left on my trip, I had the Carbon Fiber Elite Bug Out in my pocket. Still love this knife, super slim. It's just a great EDC knife. Not really good for hard use because it's so delicate. Maybe delicate isn't the right word, but if you're gonna be like chopping through wood or doing any really hard use, that's where the Osborne might take favor over something like the Bug Out. I also have a mini here, which we dyed black. So that's just kind of a cool comparison, obviously much smaller than the Osborne. Now over here is another knife that I picked up from my friends at WorkSharp while traveling, and this thing is super slick. This is a BirdViz Knives Hitchcock. Very expensive knife, traditional folder, but super well made. This version has black micarta handles. I carried it for a little bit, but I think it's almost too nice for me to carry and put some abuse on, so that's more of a collector's showpiece as of right now. And then the only knife that I have that is pretty similar in size to this right now, again, not a good comparison, but size-wise, the Openel number eight. We're talking like, eight to ten dollars sometimes you can pick these knives up for so it's super cheap it actually locks i shouldn't say cheap it's just inexpensive but it is pretty close in size to the osborne and that's about as close as i can get for comparisons as of right now now if i were to carry any of these knives right now i would probably opt for either one of these and again, like I mentioned, if I'm going to be doing something that requires a little bit more hard use, I'm gonna opt for the M4 blade here on the 940 because it's just a tougher steel. If I want something that has more longevity, I'll probably opt for something like this because the blade steel is a little bit easier to sharpen. This will require a bit more time to sharpen, but once you have that edge on there, it will retain it for a long time. And although it's not quite as corrosion resistant as the bug out, it's still definitely a very good option. So those are my thoughts on the Osborne 940. I am so glad that Blade HQ teamed up with Benchmade to make these things possible. Because if it wasn't for this exact colorway, blade steel, and all of the handle materials and everything, I probably would never have had an Osborne in my collection, but now I do. I understand the hype, I understand why they basically have a cult following, and I think it's definitely a very good EDC option. Now these knives are going to be going live on Blade HQ in about three hours from when this video is being published at 9 a.m. Eastern. I know they have a limited quantity, and because so many people love this knife, I know it's gonna sell out fast, so check out the link in the description down below if this is something that is now on your want list. Maybe it's your need list, who knows. If they do sell out, which I'm expecting they will sell out of today, then keep your eyes peeled because I believe there will be one more restock and after that, they'll be gone forever. So if these are out of stock right now, when you're watching the video and you definitely want one, might be a good idea to put a watch on that or put it in your wish list because once they're gone, I believe they're going to be gone forever. So that's all that I had for today. If you guys have any more questions on my thoughts of the Osborne 940, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. If you want to see some more knife videos in the future, again, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.